Hello, Christian Krabbenhoff from Liverpool coming to you with a few words on strength reduction analysis. Strength reduction analysis is a really um, quite useful analysis type. Um, it's available in Optum G2, Optum G3 and actually also in many other similar programs uh, available out there on the market. Um, the idea is that you have some sort of system, make some mechanical system, say a um, a footing on a slope or a retaining system or something like that and um, instead of in instead of increasing the loads the external loads if there are any suppose there are instead of increasing the external loads to induce a state of collapse you decrease the material strengths until you get to a point where the structure is right at the boundary of stability and instability and the amount by which you have to reduce the strength to get the system to fail is then, you could say, a measure of the uh, safety of the system. So, um, but before we get into that, uh, let me just say a few words about safety in general. So, any structure is of course designed uh, with a certain margin of safety against collapse, so that under normal working conditions you are at some let's say, distance from collapse. You're not right up before the, uh, uh, at the boundary of collapse, right? I mean, you're some, there's some safety. And um, how uh, this safety is, is, is measured uh, is a good question, and um, it can be done in various ways. And it is usually, in one way or another, done by first settling on um, a very general definition of the concept of the factor of safety. So the factor of safety is a um, number, completely general, is a number um, such that um, if the factor of safety is greater than one, well then the structure is stable. If the factor of safety is less than one, then the structure is unstable. That is to say it's already collapsed. And if the factor of safety is identically equal to one, well, then the structure is right at the boundary between stability and instability. So that is just sort of a very general definition of what the, what the factor of safety is, what the factor of safety is usually, um, it's the sort of a usual definition. Um, so if I say the factor of safety is 1.5, well, then you know that I'm, say, 0.5 away from, from failure. Um, how to actually um, find the exact number? So, um, um, so how much above one, or how much below one are we in any given situation? That is, of course, another question, and that is something that can be done in various ways. If we consider an example here, a footing, a shallow foundation on a more Coulomb soil, uh, cohesion of 5 kPa and a friction angle of 20 degrees. This footing here is subjected to a load of 300 kPa. How safe is this system? Or how unsafe is it? Well, I could um, calculate the ultimate limit load. Right? I could see what is the maximum load that I can apply here on top of the foundation. And suppose that was 500. Well, then I could say um, since the working load is 300, then the factor of safety, I could define it as the ultimate limit load divided by the working load. And in this case, it would be 1.67. That would be a, in principle, legitimate definition of the factor of safety. It satisfies the basic requirement that um, if um, the working load is less than the ultimate limit load, well, then Fs is, is greater than 1. If the two are equal, then it's equal to 1. And if the working load um, is, is uh, greater than the ultimate limit load, well then you're at Fs less than 1, you're already unstable. So that's, that's, that's a possibility to, to define the factor of safety um, like that. The ultimate limit load, the maximum load that you could sustain divided by the actual load. The problem though is uh, what if you have a situation like this, a slope, um, there are no loads acting on the slope in this case. So how do you conduct your ultimate limit load analysis? Well, 
you could say there is of course some gravity so you could crank up the gravity you could crank up the self weight and then at some stage uh, the um, the um, the slope might fail it might fail under twice the actual gravity or under 2.6 times the actual gravity and then you could say okay then the fa factor of safety is 2.6 uh, that's problematic for a number of reasons um, the first of which is you could say generality because we have self-weight in this case as well and um, if we increase the self-weight here of the soil well then the bearing capacity will also increase so by increasing the load plus the gravity we might well end up in a situation where the actual let's say limit load would be much higher than, than what we found by just increasing the load and keeping the gravity constant. So the question is which loads to work with? Wh what are actually the loads that you determine the ultimate limit load with respect to? Um, you could say, well, in this case, if there are external loads, then you increase those. If not, then you increase gravity. And But what about then in this case where you have a footing with some load on top of a, a slope what do you what do you work with here is is the gravity is the self weight part of the load part of the loads part of the external loads or is it only the footing loads so so it, it gets messy very quickly and to to sort of make things um, even worse if you have this slope actually with without any external loads and you increase gravity that that will actually uh, only really work if this slope inclination angle here is greater than the friction angle. If the slope inclination angle is less than the friction angle, that is to say less than the angle of repose, then this slope is stable for any gravity, for any self-weight, meaning that in principle the limit load, if you like, is infinite, and so the factor of safety would be infinite as well. So working with loads is not a good idea. You can get away with it in some cases, but it's it's not a good idea it is not uh, general at all and you end up with except for the very obvious situations you very quickly end up with just one big mess so we have to find some other way of defining the of measuring of calculating the factor of safety and um, the one thing that is common to all problems is of course that we have some materials and so this is where the idea of strength reduction comes in. So um, we have, for a more Coulomb material, we have a C and a phi, so friction angle and a cohesion. And if you draw the more Coulomb envelope, it looks something like this in you know, shear stress versus um, normal stress. And we have the intercept here, that's the cohesion, and the inclination of the envelope is the friction angle. So then you could say, okay, um, that's with the actual C and phi we have. Let's try to define some reduced parameters and let's th let those reduced parameters be calculated in the following way. Take the actual C divided by a reduction factor R, then you have a C reduced. And um, you could do the same with phi, but usually what is done is, is, is that it's actually tan phi that's reduced, so not the friction angle but the friction coefficient. So tan phi is um, somehow uh, uh, the, a more, let's say, objective measure of the, of the frictional resistance. Um, if you work with phi, for example, the question is, is phi in radians or is it in degrees? Uh, tan phi is dimensionless. It's the friction coefficient. So we introduce a reduced uh, phi by by actually reducing tan phi like this. So then we have some some some, but that's some subjective choices that uh, don't really have anything, or that don't doesn't really have anything other going for it than it is sort of reasonable. Could be done in other ways as well, but this is what is usually done. So introduce these reduced parameters, and then ask yourself: Is the problem stable or not? So if we were to draw these reduced parameters or to plot it in plot this um, reduced to more Coulomb or more Coulomb envelope with reduced parameters if we were to, to, to draw this it would look something like this 
so this would be for an R of about say 1.5 so we've reduced C by 1.5 and, and 10 phi by 1.5 so we have the red line here and so we basically decrease the strength domain so we could ask again or we could ask is is the problem stable for this reduction of the parameters if yes then we could say okay so let's try to reduce them even further is it still stable let's suppose that the answer was yes again then we would perform yet another reduction to say r equal to 2.5 um, and we could then say okay now the problem is actually not stable anymore so then we could reduce it to 2 uh, to, uh, to, to say 2.2 uh, and we could say that at 2.2 we are right at the brink of stability and instability so the idea is adjust these adjust the original parameters in such a way that you get to a point right at the boundary between stability and instability and the reduction factor um, uh, sorry about that so um, where were we um, yeah so that's how it it, it works uh, you could uh, reduce these original material parameters to be right at the point between instability between stability and instability and the critical reduction factor the reduction factor that would bring you to that point you could then define as the factor of safety um, so um, that would be one way of doing it and just sort of to this example here say we start with with a, um, these are the original parameters five KPA of cohesion, 20 degrees friction, and that corresponds to a reduction factor of 1, so no reduction. And then you could say, what about R equal to 2? Uh, so C is, is reduced by half, and phi is reduced, well, it's tan phi that's reduced by half, so phi is reduced by a little less. Then um, maybe the problem would be unstable, and you decrease the reduction factor to 1.5 it's still unstable in 1.25 you sort of iterate in you sort of you use bisection here basically uh, to get to a stage where um, at some stage you have sort of honed in on a reduction factor where you are right at the point between right at the boundary between stability and instability so 1.31 it's unstable 1.30 it's stable then you could say, well, then the factor of safety is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.3. could be 1.305 or, or whatever, but that's the idea. And that's exactly how it works in Optum G2 um, with this sort of bisection, testing whether basically is the problem stable or not. In the, in, with respect to the algorithm we use in Optum, um, uh, the technical term is, is feasibility. Is the problem feasible? Can we find a state? Can we find a, a solution? Can we find a stress field that satisfies equilibrium and the uh, failure conditions? Um, if we can, then the problem is said to be feasible, so it's stable. If not, then the problem is unstable or um, infeasible. So the algorithm is, is basically um, like this we we have an initial factor of safety which is one uh, and then we do these feasibility checks so if it's feasible the problem is feasible if it's stable then we increase the factor of safety we increase the reduction factor if not then we decrease it and then we sort of hone in on the uh, reduction factor that will bring us right to the boundary between stability and instability and that is then the factor of safety. It's actually described this algorithm, this process, procedure in this paper here, Geotechnique Letters 2015. And also importantly, I should say, we are able to calculate both lower bounds and upper bounds on the factor of safety. Um, so uh, we get these rigorous bounds on the factor of safety and we know that the exact solution is always somewhere in between the two. So um, let's try to, to start up the program and let's uh, try to solve some problems. So I start up with a white screen here. That's because I have 
done something before restore factory so we can take this we could we could just as a, we could take as an example <coughs> this slope that I showed before a slope with a and then put a footing on top uh, rigid material let's make this firm clay and see so c of 10 friction angle of 20 and standard fixities and put some load there uh well yeah let's just do a limit analysis first let's see what is actually the limit load here how much keeping the gravity fixed of course how much can i increase the load by or what is the load multiplier basically so that seems to be something in the neighborhood of 300 kpa that i can put on top of the foundation here, and this is basically how it fails nothing too surprising about that so uh, i could then set up another problem so i know the limit load is two is 300. So i could say let's have not a multiplier load but a fixed load of 200 kpa up here well, then the um, then you could say with well, a factor of safety would somehow be three divided three hundred divided by two hundred, which is it was one point five. Um, but um, we discussed that wasn't really a very good measure of the of the factor of safety. So let's try a strength reduction analysis, where we would then reduce this C and tan phi to bring about a state of collapse, and we can use mesh adaptivity here as well. And here you'll see then the iterations, as I showed you before, the reduction factor. We start with a reduction factor of one, so no reduction. It's it's stable. The problem is stable. Then two, it's unstable. One point five, still unstable, and so on. Iterate uh, until we get um, to a situation where we have uh, two solutions on either side of the boundary of stability that are more or less equal and this is the first adaptive iteration then the second adaptive iteration and the third adaptive iteration and uh, eventually we end up with a strength reduction factor of 1.19 that is the lower bound and it collapses something like that we can calculate of course an upper bound and it works exactly in the same way as limit analysis simply by changing the element type so 119 was the lower bound one something is going to be pretty similar for the upper bound. And of course, this is for a thousand elements. Of course, this, this analysis is rather more time consuming than limit analysis because it's basically a sequence of limit analysis. This feasibility check is the structure stable or unstable is kind of like similar in terms of uh, time consumption to a single limit analysis so it's something like 20 limit analysis actually we've conducted here instead of the standard three that would be required each for one of the three adaptive iterations so quite a bit more expensive um, but um, you know that's life sometimes the strength reduction factor here, upper bound 1.26 so we have a lower bound 1.19 and an upper bound of 1.26 you can take the average it's something like 1.22 also 23 so um that that was one example a second example uh, is uh, let's suppose we had somehow some sort of retaining sort of sheet pile wall uh, let's we could put that down like this so 16 meters and we'd say it's in sand medium sand do some standard fixities and then let's hope let's have a sort of a deep excavation like that 13 meters of excavation and let's have a fixed end anchor somewhere up here. Strength 
too long. We could have some surcharge as well. That's what we usually have, 10 kPa. And um, so determine the factor of safety. And again, you, you click here. And this is for a very coarse mesh. Uh, so uh, a lower bound of only one point, about 1.12, and this is uh, how it collapses. Uh, you can see the moment distribution here, bending moment distribution. We're at 731, and the yield moment is actually 800 kilonewton meter per meter. Um, so. One thing I didn't say is, that I'll say now is that you'll see here uh, under strength reduction, some of the stage settings under strength and strength reduction, it's the number of elements, the element type, time scope, long term, short term, uh, and then reduce strength in solids. And there's another option uh, which is structs. So solids is the default, and with solids we reduce C and tan phi, as I've just explained. If you choose structs well then what is actually reduced is the st uh, strength the structural strength so the 800 here and uh, also the strength of the strut of the of the, of the fixed end anchor um, the strength is, is is 300 kilonewtons with a spacing of one meter so um, so um, so you have the possibility to keep the strength here in the um, solid in the soil constant and then reduce the strength of the structs to bring about a state of collapse or vice versa right so if i choose reduce strength in, in structs well what will happen is that i will perform a strength reduction with respect to the structural elements so fixed end anchors and uh, and, and plates or geogrids if, if that's relevant and you can see now the failure mechanism is actually kind of it's, it's slightly different right i mean we now have failure in the um in the wall here so we reduce the strength of the wall and you'll also see interestingly that the actual strength reduction factors or the factors of safety that i get out of the two analyses are rather different so 1.12 for reduced strength in solid so in the soil c and c and tan phi and 1.43 if i reduce the strength in the structural elements so quite some discrepancy between those two numbers even though they both mean the same thing that they're both above one meaning that the system is stable and there's some margin of of safety as well but um this is something to, to, to be aware of. So in some cases, I mean, this is, this is somehow uh, the reduced strength in solids is, is the one that I would recommend uh, if you are to calculate, if someone asks you what is the factor of safety, then that, this is really the one. This is also one, the one that is, um, let's say, compatible with Eurocode 7, with the partial factor system, whereas this one here um, is, is not, uh, at least not directly, and I can't really recommend this trick. It's sometimes useful to, to perform this analysis just to see how much can I actually reduce the strength of the, um, of the, of the structural elements. So you can see here, actually both the wall and the strut here failed. So both have, have had their strength exceeded, but with a factor of 1.25, it means that, um, see in this analysis, I was at, at 731, it means um, that I can actually in, uh, decrease the wall moment by, by rather more than just the uh, amount uh, suggested by the previous analysis. So um, by more than 800 divided by 731. So it's, it's a useful analysis to be able to do and I uh, will have another presentation later on about uh, the use of this option here, reduce strength in structs in um, connection with the design of, of uh, retaining systems like this, embedded retaining walls, sheet pile walls and, and the likes. Final thing, um, 
what if you want to reduce the strength in the wall but keep the strength of the strut constant so it's the original strength here, the strength is, is, is 300, suppose, and the wall is, is 800 uh, kilonewton meter per meter, the yield moment. Suppose that you want to keep this 300 constant and you just want to see how much you can reduce the uh, wall uh, strength. So then we have the option up here, reducible strength, yes, no. The default for all materials is yes, but if you pick no, then basically in the course of the strength reduction analysis um, this quantity up here uh, this strength this material strength will not be reduced so let's see what happens in that case um, and then the, the the factor of safety the strength reduction factor uh, increases a bit again and you can see now uh, well there's actually still yielding in the strut there's still movement up here in the strut so we would be at 300 up here um you'd be at 300 yeah as close as you can get to 300 and then the uh, moment in the wall you see that's a uh, that's below the the 800 of course corresponding to the strength reduction factor of about 1.8 so um I think that that's was a, an introduction to, to strength reduction analysis, so it's, um, there's quite a bit of flexibility and um, it's, it's a really uh, quite a useful analysis type. See you next time.